Hey guys, Jesse Foster, aka Entranced here, and I'm coming at you guys with a video here on how to find the villain's 3-bat calling range. This is the first video that I've done in a while, and it will be pretty simple. We're just going to break down this basic skill, and it's going to be a part of a drill that I'm going to be doing later. Um, so obviously, the purpose of finding a villain serbet calling range is so we can decide, um, or maybe not obviously, but um, it's so that we can decide what hands we're going to be three betting for value, so we can uh, run our equity versus them, make sure we have the correct amount of equity, and also so that we can define our opponent's range better. The better you know, th the better we understand our opponent's range, the better we're going to be able to play against it. Now this method can be used for six packs or heads up or full ring, um, and it could probably also be used for pot limit Omaha and other forms of poker, though this is geared towards no one that hold them. The method used in here is pretty mathematical. It's not going to take into account game flow and history very much, but I think it'll give you a good basic idea of how to, uh, or a good framework that you can branch out from. So let's go ahead and get started. To find our opponent's 3-bet calling range, we're first going to need three pieces of information from your HUD. First thing is their positional opening percentage. Um, you just need to know wh how many, uh, what percentage of hands are your opponents, is your opponent opening in their position. It's very important that you have that specific position because obviously uh, the range that players are going to have is going to vary based on uh, their position. So we'll say first of all, let's look at 25%. Next we need their positional call through bet. This means, you know, how often do they call three bets in that position? If you don't have positional call three bet on your HUD, then you should add that to your HUD because you're not using all the information that you have available. Um, but also, if, if you don't have it, just go ahead and use uh, the default uh, call three bet stat. Also, take into account their, their call three bet versus um, where the three bet is coming from. Uh, on my HUD, I have uh, call three bet from an, uh, a three better that has position on the player or call three bet uh, from an out of position three bet and obviously the way people play versus those is going to be significantly different again if you don't have that on your HUD you're, you're not using all the information that you have available and uh, you're going to be not making as good of decisions so let's say this player is calling three bets 30 percent of the time Okay, I have a little chart down here. The next thing we need to know is their positional 4-bet percentage or frequency. Um, so we'll say he's 4-betting 15% of the time. That's a decently standard number. Now these two numbers, positional call 3-bet and positional 4-bet, refer to our opponent's frequency. What that number basically, or what those numbers basically say, is when our, our opponent opens, and he's opening 25%, he is three, or he is calling the three bet with a frequency of 30%, and four betting with a frequency of 15%. Neither of us of those tell us what range he is actually uh, calling or four betting. It only tells us the frequency that it occurs. So next we're going to figure out what those ranges are. Figuring out their positional, or, or sorry, their opening range should be pretty simple. It's just going to be the same as their positional open. Figuring out their call through bet range similarly should be pretty simple. It's just going to be their positional call through bet multiplied by the range that they're opening. So they're calling with 30% of the 25% that they're opening. So we go ahead and take that 0.3, 30%, multiply it by 0.25, the 25%, and we'll get that they, they are calling through bets with a range of 8% of hands. 
At a four vet range, we do the exact same way. We take the 15, multiply it by the uh, range that they are opening, and we will get a 4% four, four vet range. So what this has given us is the range or the amount of hands that are in their three vet calling range and in the amount of hands in their four vet range gives us a raw number. Now it's up to us to say what hands are actually in those range. How is that range distributed? The spreadsheet made a small mistake here in that it rounded up from this, from to 8% with, with this number, which was actually 7.5 and 4% in this uh, 3.75. We don't want to round up in this situation because we want to use as accurate information as we possibly can. So next we need to figure out uh, the total or the sum of the hands that he is not folding. So that's pretty easy. We just add together his call 3 bet range, which will be 7.5 and his 4-bet range, which will be 3.75. And we'll get 11.25% uh, is going to be the range that he is not folding to 3-bets. So this is where Equilab comes in. Or any other equity calculator would work for this. I prefer Equilab. It works pretty well for me. So we're going to go ahead and pull up the, um, the grid and plug in 11.25. It'll round up to the one that is uh, most accurate. Looks like it says the closest one is 11.46. Uh, good enough, I guess. So <clears throat> oftentimes Equilab or any equity calculator is not really going to reflect the range that your opponent is going to be not folding to a 3-bet. It's going to just tell you whatever the top hands are in terms of equity, which are not obviously not going to be what our opponent is going to be playing a lot of the time. Perhaps they should, but that's not the case. Um, so the first thing we need to do is subtract out our opponent's four betting range. So here we can see that um, it's the range is eleven point four six, and his four bet his four bet range was three point seven five percent. So we need to subtract out that 4-bet range. So we need to get it down to about the, the 7.5. So the next thing we ask, need to ask ourselves is, what position did our opponent open in? And hence, and from there, we can decide what hands is he going to 4-bet for value. Let's assume that our opponent has opened in early position. It is likely that he's going to 4-bet. Um, and let's also assume that he's facing a 3-bet from a player who has position on him. Um, so he would likely 4-bet aces, kings, queens, ace-king, and maybe jacks. It's going to be hard to say, but if he's in UTG and he's a pretty standard regular, he's probably not going to be 4-betting jacks versus us. So we can see here that that's only down to 8.9%. Now that probably means that it's likely that he is 4-bet bluffing in this situation occasionally. So what that means is that we probably need to adjust the range that he's not folding to 3-bets. It's likely that he's 4-bet bluffing with hands such as Ace-X suited or perhaps some of the, uh, the better Ace-X offsuited. So we can say that these hands such as King-10, Queen-10 suited, uh, King Jack suited are going to be hands that he's likely not going to be continuing with, whereas these uh, Ace X suited hands are going to be more in his uh, in his four betting range. And we could probably actually subtract out. Well, actually, that looks pretty good. So now we've got Ace Deuce through Ace Nine suited that he could potentially four bet bluff with. So if we add those up, the hands that he's going to be four betting with we should get 3.75%, or rather 4-betting. Okay, and as we can see here, if our opponent is 4-betting Queens Plus and Ace-King, and uh, four hands of Ace-X suited, 
we get 3.77%, uh, which roughly matches up to the amount we said, 3.75. So next, we just need to figure out what his three bet calling range is. And we do that, it's a pretty simple thing. We just subtract out the score betting range. We have aces, kings, queens, ace, king, and the ace x suited hands that he was going to four bet. And right here we have roughly the range that he is going to be calling three bets with out of position. Uh, you can still tailor some things here, like perhaps you would say, okay, maybe I think he's going to have king jack suited instead of queen jack suited. That would make sense. And maybe you think, oh, ace, ace 10 off, maybe he's not going to call that hand, but maybe, maybe he'll call some 10 9 suited and 10 8 suited, and we're still at the 7 point, around about 7.5%. So, yeah, that's how we figure out. How, um, our opponents through that calling range. And from and from there, we can make good post-flop decisions and also make good pre-flop decisions in what hands we are going to three bet for value and as bluffs. So that's it. Thank you for watching and enjoy. If you have any questions, please feel free to leave a comment or a uh, either a comment on this video post or on my blog. All right, thank you. Bye.